Hello and welcome. Already have a video up on the channel talking about the Carlton Davis trade from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to the Detroit Lions, but we're going to get a little bit more in depth in this video. That video was more reactionary when it first happened. So Carlton Davis, as you know and have surely heard by now, is traded from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to the Detroit Lions. The Bucks wind up giving up two sixes and Carlton Davis for a third round pick. Pick. And I've heard a lot of mixed reaction since the move about whether or not this was a good move by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Jason Light or a bad move. Now, from my perspective, I think this is an excellent move for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think it is a very savvy move by a savvy GM. The There is one aspect of it I do not like, and we'll get to that in a second. From the perspective of getting rid of Carlton Davis, dumping off Davis to get yourself a third-round pick. Now, third-round picks are relatively high picks, right? You could get starters in the third round. At the very least, you can get players that are likely to contribute. And that is not the same as giving away a player for fifth round pick, right? There's a lot of times you see teams unload players with big contracts and they get a fifth or they swap sixths or, you know, something to that effect. That's not what this is. A third round pick is a high value pick going into this draft and you could do something with that. That could be a a crucial contributor when you look at how the how the draft has gone in recent years for Jason Light and the Bucks. Now, as far as losing Carlton Davis, yes, on the field, Carlton Davis is a player who, to me, I've described him as a player with really high highs and really low lows. And I think it's easy to remember Carlton Davis shutting down Michael Thomas right in the playoffs or Carlton Davis against DeAndre Hopkins where he held him in his prime held Hopkins just completely shut him out right held him to under 50 yards I believe uh two separate times actually Carlton Davis against DeAndre Hopkins he has dominated that matchup it's easy to remember Carlton Davis against Jamar Chase 2022 Carlton Davis played tremendously against that game got an interception shut down Chase against the Bengals but then you could really remember right 200 yards against Tyree Kill in the first quarter, 2020, right? You can remember last year, C.J. Stroud, game-winning touchdown pass against Carlton Davis. You can remember all the injuries Carlton Davis has sustained and the amount of games he has missed. Time spent on the field is, is important, right? Availability is the best ability. And Carlton Davis has been prone to missing time. And when he has been on the field, he's been inconsistent. Now, that doesn't mean he's a bad player. It just means he isn't always playing at the level that got him the contract that he's on. While I do, of course, think Carlton Davis, high potential player, good player. I think from the Lions' perspective, I totally understand the trade. They're going all in. Cornerback's a weakness for them. And Carlton Davis will step in and be a starting corner for them. From the Bucks' perspective, Carlton Davis on a big contract, $15 million, uh, He's making $15 million this year, and it was the last year of his deal. Getting off a player, if you know you're not going to re-sign that player, if you can trade them away one year before they're going to hit free agency, and you're going to lose them for nothing, and you get something of value back, that's a savvy move. That's what good teams and good GMs do. They get off a player a year early rather than a year late. Because next year you lose Carlton Davis to free agency. If you're not planning on re-signing him, you lose him to free agency, you get nothing. Nothing for him. This year, you get rid of him a year early, and you get yourself a third-round pick, which can turn into a valuable, uh, excuse me, a valuable asset for your team. Now, what does this mean on Sundays? Well, it means that Zion McCollum is going to be, you know, in line for a promotion, to say the least. McCollum played a lot last year when Dean and Davis were banged up with injuries, as both have been kind of in the same boat, right? High-paid corners whose production is there when they're healthy, uh, but they're not always healthy. And we saw a lot of Zion McCollum last year. I felt like Zion McCollum did have an improved season off of some of the things we had seen in the past from him. And Todd Bowles has never been hesitant or shy to rave about Zion McCollum. So, yeah, Zion McCollum is in line for a promotion. I do think cornerback might be something the Buccaneers address later in free agency um, with with bargain basement kind of deals and or through the draft potentially, but I believe your starters are going to be McCollum and Dean heading into next season. I think that's at least the plan, and that's what it's slated out to be. Now, the 
The thing I don't like about this trade, because all, all in all, I think it's a good trade. Losing or letting go of Carlton Davis for a third round pick and replacing him with Zion McCollum, getting younger, getting cheaper, and also getting a pick back a year before you're going to lose a player anyway, I like. The one thing I don't like, and it's a big one thing, but it's one thing that I do not like, is the destination of the trade, the trade partner. You give Carlton Davis to the Detroit Lions, a team who just knocked you out of the playoffs a year ago, and you give him there knowing, no, it's not a divisional opponent, but the Lions are not necessarily looking like they're going to be falling off. The Lions are going all in to potentially compete for a Super Bowl again next season, which means if you want to do the same, you may very well run into Carlton Davis in the playoffs. And down the stretch... You might have a competitive game against the guy that you let go from your building, who certainly, if he's healthy, is talented. Now, that part doesn't sit right with me, right? Because down the stretch, you could be playing a postseason game against this guy. You'd like to see him traded to the either a non-contender or an AFC team, but maybe the situation is dictated by what value, um, what offers were on the table, and the value was just better from Detroit. But I do think... That part doesn't sit great with me, knowing that late next, late in the year next season, there's a chance Carlton Davis might be lining up across from Mike Evans and company. So we'll see how it goes. All in all, though, I think this is a really savvy move. This is a mark of a good organization. Get a player, develop that player, get him a second contract, and when you feel like it's time to move on, you don't hesitate, you don't cling to what could be, you move on and you move forward, and you look to replace that player. That is the sign of a, that's the mark of a good organization. That's what teams do when that's what teams do to sustain success. And the Buccaneers, I think it's a savvy move by Jason Light and Company. I'm curious what you think.